All right, thanks, Jim. Bill Snyder, third year back after taking a sabbatical. Head coach of Kansas State, their all-time winningest coach. 89 to 2005, and then came back for the 2009 season, and are they lucky to have him back in Manhattan, Kansas. Back deep, it is going to be Ben McRoy, one of the very best in the Big 12 and the nation on kick returns, along with Austin Zuzalek and Anthony Cantelli. We'll kick it away, and Joel, I know you want to play. It's 80 degrees on a Saturday night in Lubbock. There could not be a more perfect night to play football than this. Here we go. Good to have you with us in Lubbock, Texas, West Texas. They don't like their football. They live it. They love it. It is religion back here. And out of bounds it goes, so Texas Tech is going to have it. K-State won the toss and decided that they wanted their defense on the field first. So the offensive line will count as playing with a torn ACL. Not what a bad. great story. Tore his ACL in fall camp, and he's out there. He taped it up, braced it up, ready to go. And then Eric Ward, because Eric Stevens, the starting running back, tore his knee up a week ago, Eric Ward will be asked to do a lot of things in the pass game for Seth Deggie. So Eric Ward is going to be on the top of your screen. Trips on the wide side. And they're going to start. Aaron Crawford in the back cute field for Eric Stevens. It's Crawford and not much room and great recovery on the outside Trey Walker former Big 12 defensive player of the week after their win over Miami. Trey Walker a very good player. He's a sophomore 21 tackles so far on the season. Now the tempo offensive Seth Dakey and Texas Tech limiting personnel situations and substitutions for Defensive reasons for K-State underneath in and out of the hands of his intended target Cornelius Douglas Now defensively we have a second Volker is going to be the defensive end and I say a second the way they'd like to snap it junior college player He walked on to Kansas State and he's got four sacks on the year Arthur Brown transfer from Miami very good And then Ty Zimmerman last year was a freshman All-American It'll be a third and ten early Marquez in motion. Ton of time for Deggy. And it's picked and it's going the other way for six. Touchdown, Nigel Malone. That makes it four of the first five plus games for Nigel Malone. And I'm talking about interceptions. Boy, do they capitalize on mistakes. Nigel Malone read Seth Deggy's eyes the entire time. He jumps the route. Wasn't even the player he lined up over. Jumps the route, and that's as easy of a pick six as you're going to ever find Seth Deggie's second interception of the year. That's all, but it goes for six early for Kansas State. Cam Kelly puts it through for a perfect beginning. So Kansas State, 37 seconds into the game, they knew what they were doing when they won the coin toss and said, we want our D on the field first. A rare mistake, only the second interception of the season for Seth Deggie. And it's Kansas State up early. Beer. And by Sprint. All football, no limits. Only from Sprint. Well, right away, Seth Dagey. Man, the Red Raiders are going to get the football back 37 seconds into the contest. As Nigel Malone, if you joined us a split second late, you missed it. A touchdown off a pick for Malone. That's his fourth interception already this season. He's from Manteca, California, and another one of those guys that transferred in from the City College of San Francisco. Kansas State under Bill Snyder plays such a simple defense. They just play base defense, cover four all the time. Nigel Malone took advantage. Cantelli with a line drive, trying to take McRoy out of it, and he does. He's seventh in the nation in kick returns. And a look back on the pick. Another basic defense from Kansas State. Malone's at the and he just shuffles, shuffles, baits him into it. Actually, this was the first play of the game on just the run play, but that's the exact same defense that they ran on this play, the second play of the game. Deggie was trying to go out to the true freshman, Bradley Marquez, and that's when Malone was able to step in front, intercept it, and go for six. They're going to be in that defense, Joel, all day long. So they're barely in their seats, so you can't say they're stunned. <laughs> that's right. They're just arriving. Good point. An early lead for K-State. They already won a big one on the road this year, don't forget, and upset on the road earlier in the season. It's dumped off, and it's complete underneath. 
as they go to Adam James, wide receiver, kind of a hybrid and a tight end, the way they set things up. But the course like game plan. Well, for Texas Tech, it's Deggie's show. With Eric Stevens out, he's got to be great. you got to spread the ball around, and then the defense has to grow up quick. Their very young, two true freshmen will at times be linebackers for them on the field, Joel. Nothing doing that time once again for Aaron Crawford the senior and his task try to do something that Eric Stevens was doing already at a very high level. Stevens out rest of the year. Unfortunately a knee injury on a play that was already whistled dead but the activity continued. And a strange situation at the end of the play. So he's lost now for the Red Raiders who kept everybody honest with a good running game. Offside free down. Let's see if Daggy can capitalize. Nope. To take the free five though. As he's dropped close to the line of scrimmage by By Latui. Junior from Offside Salt Lake City. Number 57 of the defense. It's a five yard penalty, and it's still first down. Volker trying to get a quick jump. They're going to try to draw Jordan Volker off sides, which they were able to do on that down. He's got five tackles for loss, four sacks. The walk on player, high motor, and gets a great jump off the ball. Texas Tech takes advantage for a free five yards. It'll be Crawford, good hold up the middle, and lunges close to the marker on first and five. Gets four. Well, what I was talking about with Eric Stevens and, and what he was doing for this team and making it easy on Seth Daggy as well. They, I mean, they were running the ball so effectively for the first time ever here in Lubbock. Eric Stevens was a great player. Now, Daggy going for the bundle and overshooting his intended target. He tried to get it downfield for Alex Torres, the junior from El Paso. But looking back on how it developed, I said, a strange situation at the end of a dead play. Well, and you can see the momentum for the Texas A&M player just continued. And Stevens was just in an awkward position. You hate to see that for such a great player and a big part of this Red Raider offense. Caught a third in the yard. Moved the H back in motion. And Crawford, indecision cost him. Give the K-State defense credit though the penetration and Arthur Brown up the middle a big part of that the junior from Wichita and he's been a big part of their resurgence defensively they've been so good first in total defense in this Big 12 conference and they get off the field early against Texas Tech already a defensive touchdown and now getting off the field forcing a punt I love what I see from the Wildcats so far Ryan Erksleben will punt it away They'll use the clock. K-State from the 12. And a little lane over to the right side, but good play again. He's brought down. Tremaine Thompson brought it down, but Marquez caught up with him. The wide receiver gets another wide receiver on special teams play. Defensive touchdown. We'll talk about that. And now offensively, Colin Klein is going to be protected by Clyde Offner, the right tackle, the offensive line. He's the most experienced one up front, Joel. Yeah, and John Hubert in the backfield, Joel, he's the guy that has to take some of those carries away from Colin Klein, the quarterback. Hubert, sixth leading rusher in the Big 12 Conference. Colin Klein, the seventh leading rusher in the Big 12 Conference. Their game is on the ground. They both average just about 94 yards per carry. So now a 4-2-5 defense against a team that likes to run the football. An interesting contrast tonight, Lubbock. Wade Wilson setting up on a change right away. Klein, he wanted to throw it, and he will. It's an afterthought, but it's a good one to Tyler Lockett, the true freshman. His dad, Kevin, the all-time Wildcat leading receiver. Now defensively for Texas Tech. Kerry Hyder, he's a disruptive sort, isn't he? Undersized but quick, and he's got to play great against that running game, and so does Blake Dees. He's a true freshman, got to play strong. Cody Davis in the back end, a very good player. He's going to have some opportunities against Colin Klein in the pass game. That's a nice ad lib by Colin Klein to find Lockett. He didn't panic, did he? He'll keep it in his own read, and he'll be driven down. It's Leon Mackey, the defensive end, holding containment on that side. We're going to try the zone read. Colin Klein makes a terrific read off the defensive end. Because the defensive end pinches down the line, he goes ahead and pulls it. 
ends up getting stopped by that very player anyways but Colin Klein knows that sometimes the best decision is to take it for no yards especially if your running back is going to go for minus four he's got Hubert in the backfield on a third down batted up in the air and timed beautifully that's Scott Smith the senior from Hawaii on the other side the defensive end they are so happy to have Scott Smith back back after a suspension and playing very well this defense will be much different with him on the edge right side of your screen Kansas State's trying to cut him you side Offner on the ground trying to cut Scott Smith didn't bite hands on the offensive lineman gets his hands up bats it down door a junior from Katie will punt it away to Austin Suzano and let's see about the exchange field position wise they go after it and just barely missed getting the doors punt Fair catch called for him. man when we come back Texas Tech is going to have it down by seven for the third time they'll have it they'll have it in good shape at their own 35 college football Saturday it starts next weekend at noon Eastern nine Pacific of course in high definition buff struggling a little bit this year Joel just a little <laughs> quick one bubble screen and talk about the resiliency I mean getting out there and bringing down the wide receiver as it's taken in over there by Eric Ward but Zimmerman and it'll look like five to ten yards Zimmerman gets him after three or four nothing for Crawford Boy, the running game five carries eight yards for the running game right now you think they miss Stevens early well it's going to be tough because Kansas State obviously faces their offense every day in practice iron sharpens iron a good running game breeds a good defensive run game that's what you're seeing for Kansas State so far so slow start offensively for the Red Raiders but give the Wildcats credit now Deggie ton of time perfect timing Adam James first down Second first down of the game for the Red Raiders and in K-State territory for the first time. James is going to have to have a big game because they are playing off. It is basic, basic defense with two free safeties way back. James right over the middle. You see all the free space that he has. Seth Deggie finds him easily. We're going the other way. Trying to make it work and hanging on for dear life. The defensive back on that side, Alan Chapman, gets Swindoll. Good play by Chapman. Yeah, Chapman normally just the nickelback, but he'll play almost every snap tonight versus the spread sets at Texas Tech. Speaking of spreads, man, do they get you out. And three up top, wide side of the field, go that direction. Inside the 20, it's complete. Five, touchdown. Taken in by Douglas. Red Raiders with a flag on the play. Was an offsides, the decline. Seth Digg, he comes right back after throwing the interception for the touchdown earlier today. Finds Douglas right over the middle for the strike and the six points. So a little more than five minutes in. Cantelli in for the point after, make it Donnie Corona rather, the senior from Beaumont in for the point after try. And we are all even. So at 9.47 to play, they get a score for the first time after giving one up offensively. Seth Deggie is just forcing the safeties off the hash with his eyes. Tyson Hartman, number two, was just way out of position. You see Deggie looking all the way to his left. That forces Tyson Hartman, number two, off the hash and allows Douglas a free seam down the middle of the football field. Great answer from Texas Tech their third series of the game and, and as Tommy Tupperville told us and you could really see there there was no pressure on Daggy but Daggy's a warrior and he hangs in there and as Tommy Tupperville said he's got the respect of the offensive line because he's iced up after games if he can sit like that with no pressure all day long this is gonna be a long day for Kansas State's defense because they do play such a safe defense always with two safeties back over the middle is gonna be wide open for Tommy Tupperville and Seth Daggy 
Jim Knox, what's going on down there? Joel Santhaga can continues to get congratulations. I talked to him before the game. Believe it or not, I asked him, who do you pat in your game after? He didn't say uh, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, or even Joel Clack. He said Cliff Kingsbury, of all people, one of the great quarterbacks here at Texas Tech. All right, San Antonio kick Cliff Kingsbury. It's about five yards into the end zone. And Swindoll will stay there for Academy Sports and Outdoors game break. Let's go to Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen. All right, thank you, Kevin. Alabama. And to think they were down to start the game. <laughs> First points of the game got, against them. Got the sense they would always come back. No. <laughs> really? <laughs> now out of the gun. Counting Klein. Can they get the ground game going? This is a team that leads the nation in time of possession because they do run the football. Klein on the edge and forced out. Good pressure once again, though. And pushing him was Scott Smith to the boundary. Tremaine Thompson on the top of your screen. Top of the formation was wide open and Klein, that's about the time that he had to scramble out. Never was able to set his feet and get the ball down the field, but that running game has allowed them to chew up clock. 35-57, time of possession per game. It's a big reason why their defense has been so successful as well. Right, they're not on the field. It's second and long. Matt, the scramble by Klein. Hubert readjusts. Little delay in counteraction. But it turned it in. Man, play was busted up early. A gain of only one. And now third and about six. Course like game plan for K-State. They have to limit the possessions of Texas Tech. You already saw them get the pick six and force a punt. Three possessions for Tech so far. One touchdown. They got to stay basic on defense make them go 80 yards in 10 or 13 plays and then no mistakes on offense no turnovers and limit the penalties so now third and six second series of the game offensively for kansas state they look for their first first down four-man rush underneath and widely intended target thompson it was available too and he had good protection was able to step into that throw and it just sailed on him a little bit outside of Thompson's reach Klein's gonna have to make some plays on third down to keep his offense on the field already a couple of third failed down conversions now for the Wildcats Zuzadik back in Joel field position so important for a Kansas State team uh, especially if they've got to play catch up and, and right now it's even but it looks like barring a turnover Texas Tech is going to have good field position again Doyle will punt it inside his own 15. Zuzalik, he doesn't call for the fair catch. Still, he's got it at about the 40-yard line. So two big plays, one defensively for K-State, offensively for Texas Tech. He has started with Nigel Malone, picking off Seth Deggy on the second play from scrimmage for Texas Tech. Just sat on the route, steps in front, and he goes to the end zone. But Texas Tech on their third possession, they got some things going over the middle of the field. K-State jumped off sides. Deggy had a free play, finds Douglas down the seam. That's how they got on the board. So Deggy now finding some rhythm. This is the next series. This is the fourth series for Texas Tech. They found some success over the middle. Let's see how Kansas State reacts to that success for the Red Raiders. Empty backfield. Five set up at receiver. Man. A little cross in the flat, and way too easy for a gain of about 15. So right away, Texas Tech showing what they can do. If you can't get to Seth Dagey and force him to throw the ball quickly, it's going to be a long day. The runoffs of the outside receivers leave big seams in the underneath for the running backs and tight ends. That was Ben McRoy, and very rarely do they bring him out in those situations. But it worked. Underneath, it works again. And another first down on a gain of 11. So they bring it in with Alex Torres, his second grab of the game. Kansas State has sat in zone every play so far of this football game. They're going to have to mix this up and play some man coverage at some point. Tripped up out of the backfield. Man, they're mixing things up now as the running back that time was DeAndre Washington. So Washington, he's their fastest running back, a true freshman out of Missouri City, Texas. Deggy on the quick count. Ton of time. Washington can't make a miss. But why, why? It's Arthur Brown. 
That's why. That's, he's, he's that quick. And that's exactly what Kansas State wants him to do is force the check down and allow Arthur Brown a one-on-one -on -one opportunity to force a third down. Now Kansas State, an opportunity on third down to force a field goal or get off the field. 8 of 11, Seth Daigie in the passing department. He sits seven straight. So not exactly overwhelmed by throwing a pick early in the game. He's bounced back. It'll be third and short, third to about five. Looks one way, bubble screen the other way, and throws it away. And that's a break because Washington was well covered. And a great job by Kansas State of getting off the field, forcing a kick, whether it's a field goal or a punt. Nice job from Kansas State there because Texas Tech had things rolling on that series for the first few plays. Donnie Corona is going to try a 48-yard field goal. Academic All Big 12 last year. He's six of eight so far this season. He has a 49-yarder. One of his six makes. Exchange is good and it's blocked. No shot. Kansas State, like Virginia Tech, one of the best teams in the nation when it comes to special teams play. Bill right up the gut. Bill Snyder's teams are always great at things that they can control, Joel. Special teams, penalties, lining up correctly. All the things that they have control over, they're terrific at. And again, right up the middle, finds a seam, goes in and blocks it. It's big number 94 gets in there for the block. Terrific job by Rafael Guidry, a senior from Texas City, Texas, to get the block and a huge momentum swing for Kansas State. So now they get it back, the Wildcats, at their own 28. They're still even at seven with 6.52 to play in the first 15. Hubert, they have not been able to get him off early, Joel. So good job. And we talk about a defense that's really schemed towards defending the pass more than the run. And they gave up 205 yards a week ago on the ground to Texas A&M. And you can clearly see where the emphasis was for the Red Raiders in practice this week, stopping the run. And it starts up front, the defensive line right now, winning the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and eight from the 30. Harper one side, lock at the other. And in the zone read, they wrestle Hubert down very quickly. A guy that also averages, as you mentioned, 94 a game. So he slugs it out to the 34. And already what we're seeing is Texas Tech be more basic on defense than they have during the course of this season. It's a more of an exotic scheme. 4-2-5, they play with five defensive backs, but they're lining up in a traditional 4-3 set, trying to allow these players to play fast on third down. They're trying to convert their first third down of the contest and also pick up their first first down. They're in good shape, tied at seven without a first down to the game yet. Almost 10 minutes gone by. It'll be Connor Klein calling his own number. He's got it. They can't do it, I will. Colin Klein read it beautifully. Anytime that the quarterback is going to run it directly with a lead blocker, you're going to have numbers as an offense. Uses number 33, John Hubert, as his lead blocker. How about the block from the center there? Big number 50, actually left guard Nick Pitts gets out there, finds the linebacker, clears the hole. Klein finds himself past the chains for a first down. And the one thing Bill Snyder emphasized to us about Colin Klein was his toughness. And now all of a sudden a wildcat in the backfield. It's a direct snap, and it goes to the running back. Not much doing, though. Maybe two yards by Peace, the backup, Angelo Peace, Jr. from Georgia. Kansas State is going to have to throw the ball down the field to try to get this defense out of the run box. Bill Snyder knows that right now. He's going to have to have Colin Klein throw the ball accurately down the field, or else Texas Tech is going to continue to sit there with eight, nine guys close to the line of scrimmage. Right, and we talked about making Colin Klein throw the ball over their head or at least attempt to. Another one cat again. Colin Klein flanking it out to the top of your screen. It'll be peace. And he's got it across the 45. Academy Sports and Outdoors game break to Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen. All right, thank you. Tough place to play as Miami found out very early this season, Kevin. Thank you. Now, it'll be another third down. Third about six. Hubert stays with Klein in the backfield. Yeah. Hits him right at the marker. It's a first down taken in once again on that side by Tremaine Thompson. 
nice throw by Colin Klein Good cover, on the Clinton. outside. It was great coverage, but it was even better throw. Accuracy always beats good coverage. Terrific coverage by the corner, but he was able to hit him right out of his break, right on the chest. That's called framing him up, throwing it right on the frame of the wide receiver. Good throw by Colin Klein. So back-to-back -back first downs. And across the midfield strike. Hubert weaves his way for a top three. They sent Lockett just to plant a seed for down the road on the reverse as Bush was in on the stop. So let's see if Kansas State can control the football, what they've done so well over the first five games of the season. This is the patented Kansas State drive. It feels like they've been on the field forever. Texas Tech's just sitting on the sidelines offensively right now. And, and Joel, that's why they've got to have a high percentage on third downs. Because they don't have big plays. They don't have the... The explosives that everybody says 20 or more yards. Second and seven. Nice play fake by Colin Klein. And throws it at the feet of his tight end. 6'8, 270 pound Andre McDonald. Like to see him make a shoestring catch. <laughs> that's, that's a long way to go down <laughs> for McDonald, but that's not a bad burn. You know, Colin Klein, when your tight end is covered that well. You don't want to give him an opportunity for a tipped ball. The ball goes up in the air for an interception. Might as well just burn it at his feet. Live to play another down for a third down opportunity. So they've converted on their last two third downs. On third and seven. Good pocket protection off the fingertips of the big guy once again. He was going for McDonald. And he's forcing it on a deflection like that. There wasn't somebody behind him to pick it. Texas Tech did a great job on the last play of forcing the third and long. Colin Klein lets this sail just too high for Andre McDonald. But the reason that they're in that situation is because it was a third and seven rather than a third and four. Zuzanik waiting for the punt once again. Not much wind tonight, which is rare for West Texas. There's nothing to block the wind. Man, that's concentration. Surrounded. He's got it at about the 13. Good job by Dora, though, with the hang time. Yeah, what a change in field position. The defense of Kansas State, the most improved area of their team. I mean, what a change for them from last year to this year. It starts with the run game. You've got to stop the run. They've been able to do that total defense you see the disparity there from last year to this year and then the points 29 to 16 overall total defense Joel they're the number one defense in the conference right now and you can see why very basic and they force you to execute down the field it'll be Crawford or check that yeah Crawford out of the backfield little jump cut over to the right he gets it up to 15 after all is said and done only a gain of two though as Trey Walker got over there this defensive line has been so good. Volker, Kibble, Latui, and Williams all transfers from junior college, and they've come in right away and been a force. And, and Volker has been a force as a former walk-on. Deggy has time of the comeback route. Man is complete. Close to the first down. It'll depend on where they mark it. As it's brought in by Eric Ward. A sophomore from Wichita Falls. Meshack Wills, uh, Williams, excuse me, number 42, had his target, the bullseye, right on Seth Degg. He was just a hair late. Crawford, a little misdirection, lunges for about two. And our apologies for one of our microphones picking up anything down on the field you might have heard. It was definitely down on the field. It didn't come from the booth. It's tied at seven with 95 seconds and counting left in the first quarter. The tempo that we've seen over a decade now. The rhythm offense of Texas Tech. Ton of time for Seth Daggy. Man, his receivers read it perfectly, don't they? Coming back once again. Different receiver. It's Terrell Miller this time, the sophomore from New Orleans. And a terrific timing route. The timing between the receivers and Seth Daggy is impeccable. You can see the product of throwing the ball for years and years and years. Marcus Kennard, number 88, comes back perfectly out of his break. So Daggy, who is now 10 of 14, has gone to eight different receivers already. Little delay, and one of the better runs as they get it from McRoy. Or make it DeAndre Washington. 
First and 10 line is all brought to you by Mazda. So in the final minute, the wild start to the contrast. First pass by Deggy going the other way for a touchdown. And concentration, I guess, it's complete after a bobble by Eric Ward. And he's got the first down. Yeah, that was Trey Walker from this outside linebacker spot running out, trying to run underneath this route. Pops the ball out of Ward's hand. Terrific concentration from Ward to bring that back in. Going for the bubble screen again. And not much available. Boy, the defense can recover. Torres on the outside, but give K-State credit. A lot of credit because they're forcing Texas Tech to snap the ball more than they're used to. Remember, they're used to scoring within about six plays. Defenses will create vulnerabilities, and they'll go down the field. Kansas State forcing them to snap it over and over. Flag is down, going for the bundle. Jump ball inside the 10. It's complete. What a grab by Swindoll. It looked like it could have been offside. Offside by the defense. The penalty's declined. It's a first down. That's Tremaine Swindoll, a senior from Oklahoma City. Well, and now twice. Texas Tech and Seth Dagey right there over the ball. The nose tackle jumps for Kansas State drives the coach nuts. But Seth Dagey twice now has realized that he's had a flag on the ground and a free play, and he's gone down the field. Won the touchdown to Douglas, and now down the down the seam, down the sideline to Eric Ward puts the ball first and ten inside the ten. So after the junior from Wolford, Texas, Seth Dagey had a disastrous start. He's recovered pretty nicely, and they're driving first to go when we come back for the Red Raiders. You're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Welcome back once again on a beautiful night in West Texas. Joel Myers, Joel Klett, Jim Knox, we're in Lubbock. Last snap before we went away at the end of the quarter, Joel. This is a terrific job of recognition. Seth Dagey recognizes the blitz and the safety moving to the middle of the field, and he knows that Alan Chapman is one-on-one -on, -one on the outside with his receiver, Eric Ward. He looks off the safety and then goes right to the one-on-one -on -one coverage and then puts the ball high for Ward to go up and get it at, the, at its tallest point against the shorter corner. Alan Chapman only 5'11", 180 pounds. So a terrific job by Seth Deggie of recognition and then just giving the wide receiver an opportunity to catch the ball, Joel. These guys are athletic. This is what they came to Lubbock to do. And you got to give them the opportunity, and Deggie did on the last play. And they have a missed beat under Tommy Tuberville as That's well. Right. It's been a seamless transition because they got a guy that's a pro and has been successful elsewhere. Going way back to his days with Jimmy Johnson in Miami as the defensive assistant. It's first to go from the seven of the first snap of the second quarter. Ton of time for Deggy. Set up a lawn chair back there. It's thrown wide of Torres. And it's going to be second and goal. Can't ask for much more, though, from your offensive line. Now, they have one miss in the red zone. 25 of the 28 scores are touchdowns. The one miss, they ran out the clock against Kansas. On the give. Diving touchdown. DeAndre Washington. This is the guy I thought would carry the load in Eric Stevens' absence. The true freshman, DeAndre Washington, out of Missouri City, Texas, carry over the left tackle, puts it into the end zone. It's Corona for the point after. So the last 14 points of the game from the Red Raiders, and they have dominated the proceedings so far. The only points for K-State came from their defense as Texas Tech has their first. The lead for the first time for the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Time for our BMW Ultimate Drive, an 87-yarder for the Red Raiders. And it started with a timing route. That's what kind of set everything up and got Seth Dagey in rhythm. Then he found Swindle down the sidelines, gave him a chance over Chapman in the one-on-one -on -one coverage first and goal inside the 10 and then the true freshman the fastest guy on the field when he's in the game DeAndre Washington finds himself in the end zone he's only 5'7 182 pounds but a bright future here with the Red Raiders so 10 plays 87 yards that's what Kansas State wants to force him to do is snap it about 10 times 
but they just executed better than the Wildcats found themselves in the end zone. Lockett waiting back deep, along with Tremaine Thompson. So 14 to 7 lead for the Red Raiders. And a returnable one down the middle. It'll be Lockett from the one. Nice lane over to the right side. Angles it beautifully up the middle. He might go the distance. Do they have an angle? He's run away, completely run away from them. Lockett's in. Touchdown, K State. Special team so big once again. A block field goal. And now a kick return for a score. Ninety-nine yards for Tyler Lockett. Decisiveness in the kick return. Joel, I always say it's one of the best traits that a returner can have. He follows his blockers, and then when he sees the lane, bang, right there. He cuts back, and he's north and south, straight up the field, and now it's all about speed. Angles away from the defense. The kick return. Kick, kickoff team and finds himself in the end zone. What a great return from Lockett. And then they go and miss the extra point. A rarity. So Cantelli cannot tie it up. It's wide left on an extra point. 14-32 left in the first half. A wild start as K-State doesn't have much offensively, but they're right where they want to be. Allen with good reason. 18-year-old true freshman. Tyler Lockett out of Tulsa and boy the Lockett family has been very good it works both ways for K-State generational deal <laughs> Kevin Lockett of course was a terrific receiver Kevin's brother Aaron was here and Tyler Lockett Kevin's son shows up at Kansas State had that big reception against Miami and now a huge return against Texas Tech a true freshman won a state title a year ago how about that smile and what they have done without much offense tonight and I bring it up because now that is the second most since 1999 they have a interception return for a score they have a kick return for a score that is Sean Snyder the coach's son and he is their special teams coordinator does anybody since he took over in 89 and you got to remember there's a lot of Juco transfers on this squad and former walk-ons we talked about does anybody get more out of his team than Bill Snyder they're only down by a point in a tough place to play it is McRoy he is seventh best in the nation on kick returns with a stiff arm only to the 24 and takes his shot. Now, a look back on the magic Lockett just provided. I thought it was decent blocking. It wasn't great, but he found the lane, the decisiveness to cut back. Texas Tech gets just out of position right there, and he finds the lane, cuts back. Everybody stays with their block, and now it's a foot race. A tremendous job from Tyler Lockett. You know, he had an early alley. We had it over to the right side. And then he cut then back. Then he recognized the flow. And he did a phenomenal job. So now, Texas Tech, <laughs> they have 200 yards to about 40 for K-State, yet it's a ball game early. And low catch, good grab. Going down to get it for Dengue was Eric Ward. A sophomore from Wichita Falls, who he's been their big score guy this year, touchdown wise. Eight touchdowns coming in. It'll be second and seven. So Dagey has spread the ball around. Eight different receivers already. It'll be Crawford making a miss. His best run of the night. Man, he's got a first down. Gain of about eight for Crawford. You never want to see Tyson Hartman, number two, your safety with the first contact, untouched until the third level of the defense. On first down, little dump off for Crawford, just a check down, and good for seven, maybe eight. This is going to be a real game of patience for Seth Diggy. He's going to be forced to check the ball down to his backs a lot. Snapped the ball a lot, and you're already seeing that Kansas State only 38 yards on 15 plays. Tech has already ran 31 plays for well over 200 yards. So if you're Kansas State, you feel like you're in great shape because you're still gonna, absolutely. This is their type of game, right? And you feel like, well, the offense has to click eventually and gain some momentum. On second and short, yeah, it's wide at the intended target. They wanted a flag on the safety Zimmerman. Won't get it on the coverage. Zimmerman, the best player in the back end, is going to be coming over the top. 
Very close. Very close. Put that hand you on the shoulder the pad. Yeah, he did. He did get him a, just a little bit, but no flag thrown. You hear the crowd reacting after they see it on the Jumbotron. So now third and short. Red Raiders one of four. Man on the give. Crawford breaks the tackle and boy the extra effort. A couple of times he had to get away to get the first down. Well, he had a collision with two. Number two Tyson Hartman. He just wanted it more and wanted to move the chains. Going to be a first down at the 46. Daggy low and away. Yeah, that was a, almost a one time where we didn't see a lot of conviction in the throw. There is a flag and is a roughing on the quarterback as he looked for Eric Ward. Holding number 66 of the offense. It's a 10 Ooh. yard penalty and it's still second down. Well, that's Gallington, the right guard. I thought that could have gone either way. Volker is at the bottom of your screen. He was coming in. Actually, it was on number 94. You see how Deggy goes down late. Anytime he goes down late, you just never know about that flag. They're going to get him for the hold, pushes Tech back. Now on first and 20, bubble out in the flat. And nothing doing for Douglas. That plays directly into the hands for Kansas State, forcing the short pass from Seth Deggy, corralling up, corralling the ball carrier. Tackling well in the open field. Texas Tech needs to attack the middle of the field right now, those middle seams. Daggy looking underneath, goes over the top. It's available. Douglas has it for a first down inside the 30 and on the spin to the 25 24. Joel, exactly what I was talking about the middle of the field. And the down the field seams you're going to see the big open area in the middle of the field past the linebackers if you get the protection and you get past that second level it becomes a very easy throw he hit him in stride and another offside on kansas state third time tonight daggy middle of the field and behind is intended target he has tried to get it to marquez but he had a free snap once again boy that hard counts working Uncharacteristic of Kansas State. Offside, number 95 of the defense. It's a five yard penalty, and it's still first down. That's Ray Kibble, who has had a sensational start for this team this year. Kibble's on the inside, and it, you just hate it when it's your tackles. They're right over the football. The hard count is getting it. That's twice now the nose tackle has jumped off sides. Bill Snyder is not going to be happy about that. In fact, he's all the way out on the field. Giving it to his defense a little bit right now. They need to play discipline. So it's a first down on another long drive for Texas Tech. Yeah, give to Washington. Not much as he's tripped up, maybe two. Jim Knox. All right, Tyson Hartman now back on the field, but a couple of plays ago, that collision with, with Crawford sent him to the sidelines. They were checking out his neck, but he's back, guys. He's sat out the last couple of plays. All right, Hartman, the senior from Wichita. He forced a fumble, a huge play in the Baylor game. Won that by 36-35 when Robert Griffin late in the game for his first pick of the year and it turned into the winning points. Second and three. Pocket holds up. Man, he's got a first down. Going out to Eric Ward once again. So that's nine now that have caught it from Daggy as Seth Daggy is 18 of 24 for better than 220. Not a bad start. He's got his second pick of the year, though. You know, one interception with 17 touchdowns over the first five games. And an interception on his second throw of the night tonight. Timeout has been called by K State. Adjustments needed. They had a blitz called. Bill Snyder didn't like it. Chris Kosh, the defensive coordinator, didn't like it. Had to take a timeout, go back to the sideline. So the Red Raiders driving once again, four minutes into the second quarter, a one point lead when we come back. Kevin Frazier, Marcus Allen, join us in our Coors Light Studio.
Thank you, Kevin. And Marcus. One point game, but Texas Tech starting back at their own 24. Now as a first and 10 of the 11. 11 04 left in the half. Pressure comes and they bat it down on Daggy. One of the few times they've actually been able to penetrate like that is Lemur got in there. They finally pressured. They finally blitzed. They played man to man coverage on the outside and forced Seth Daggy to hold the ball for a fraction of a second longer than he wanted to and allowed the rush to get there. One more guy than Texas Tech could block. And give the block to Ray Kibble getting up there. It'll be second and 10 from the 11. Crawford going nowhere. Boy, in the backfield was Davis waiting for him. The left end out of Folkston, Georgia. Adam Davis, second big stop for him tonight. And a couple of huge plays in a row for Kansas State. This is where you just want to call base defense and force Seth Daigie to throw a check down and force a field goal for Kansas State. The last thing they want to do is create a one-on-one -on -one matchup and a vulnerability that Daigie can exploit. And so often, as you look at the red zone graphic, so often spread teams have problems inside the 20 punching it in. That has not been the case. Another offside. There is movement up front, and maybe it's a false start this time because Kansas State did lean over to the center to the right guard side. But spreads usually have problems inside the red zone. A false start by number 74 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still third down. This is big Mickey Okafor. He comes back. He was coming back from an injury. He's the tackle at the top of your screen. Actually, it was more the guard. They yep. call that on Okafor, but Gallington, number 66, was really the one that leaned out of there, Joel. Guilt by association. And a mark off of five. Five minutes gone in the second quarter. Second penalty on Texas Tech. They need to take it to the one for a first down. A third down. Daggy way over the head of his intended target, Eric Ward. Wasn't close. So another field goal try coming up. Last one blocked, but it was a long one, and it could have been a little bit lower. And another win for Kansas State to get off the field. It was a long drive. It was an effective drive, but in the end, they're forcing a kick. Whether it's a punt or a field goal, you're happy if you're a Wildcat right now. Well, Corona, his only time out there tonight, had a 49-yarder blocked. This is going to be a 38-yard attempt. And it's blocked again. Do you believe it? Picked up on the outside by Malone. It's live. And there goes Malone. Look out. He's got an open field over to the left side. And barely tripped up by Corona. Man, Kansas State special teams. There's a reason they're second best in the nation over the last 10 plus years in non offensive scores. And for the second time tonight, Rafael Guidry gets in through the middle of the line of scrimmage. There's big number 94 again. Gets in. That is way too easy. Creating vulnerabilities. Inside, in between the tackles. And again, things that you can control. Effort level on a field goal try. And Gidry gets in and blocks it. Well, and how do you lose a 6'4", 300 pounder? It was almost like he was untouched. Now K-State looks to take the lead. Hubert instead Klein on the carry. Yeah, good yardage on first down. Now they have an opportunity to run their offense in plus territory. And really take the air out of this stadium. And Texas Tech, who had some momentum. They've had some clean drives. We've seen the total yards for Texas Tech. They're moving the ball. Not getting a lot of points after off of it. Kansas State needs to hold the ball, methodically take their way down the field toward the goal line. 260 yards for Texas Tech, and before that snap, 38. Make it 43 yards now after the five-yard run. Shovel pitch. Little stutter step action. Hubert's got a first down. Inside the 36, close to the 35. Physical run at the end. Hubert lowers his shoulder against Terrence Bullitt, number one, the fifth, fifth defensive back for Texas Tech in that 4-2-5. Terrific physicality out of Hubert to move the chains at the end. He knows the collision's coming. He lowers his shoulder, gets the first down. Special teams don't mean much, do they? Oh, my goodness. It's a first down. Now, short side. Block from Hubert. Got a nice play underneath. Getting out on the edge. 
and making the stop. It was Scott Smith once again. Otherwise, that's good yardage. Klein did a nice job of being patient, allowing that to develop, but Smith just made a better play from his defensive end position to get off the ball, off the block, shed the block, and bring Klein down. Wildcat here. Klein's going out, lining up as a receiver. Angelo Peace in the backfield, along with the fullback, Wilson, and also John Hubert. Hubert shifts out, wide receiver, top of the screen. Peace. And he's got a yard on a scramble, maybe two, inside the 32. That's not a bad play for Kansas State. Remember, this is a methodical team. They didn't want to be in third and eight, but third and six is much more manageable for Co Colin Klein in this offense. Exactly what Bill Snyder wanted to happen tonight is happening for them. Special teams and methodical drives out of their offense. They don't have a point from their offense yet. Although, halfway through the second quarter, an opportunity to take the lead. Out of the gun. Good time. Third and six, and a low throw. Sliding grab. Lock it. He has been the focal point, specials and offense tonight. His second catch and a first down. It was good protection for enough time for Colin Klein. And I got to credit him for the patience of standing in there, even though he's more of a running quarterback, while the pocket is collapsing, and he gets the ball all the way down the field to move the chains. What a great throw from Klein. And it's like Bill Snyder said, he's got the respect of his teammates because of the, the degree of toughness he brings to the position. It'll be Hubert maneuvering his way and scrambling inside the 15 down to the 13. Boy, it showed some quick feet there. So all of a sudden, quieting things down in the Red Raider Nation. I, I like the, the vision for Hubert. He's going to let his offensive line wash everything down to the right. Couple of jump cuts, and that's where he finds green grass to fall forward for four yards. Get, gets four. And now, as you talked about, a manager of second downs for K-State. Hubert again, boy, a huge hole up the middle. As he's pushed back from the nine, and a flag at the end of the play. It may be a first and goal. After the play, the personal foul, unnecessary roughness by number 11 of the defense. It's half the distance to the goal, and an automatic first down. That's Leon Mackey, the defensive end. Leon Mackey with some extracurricular. He's just beyond McDonald. You see right at the end, that's number 50. Nick Pitts, the left guard, just too much right in front of the official, draws the penalty. Exactly what Kansas State wanted. First and goal inside the five with some momentum and rhythm in that running game. Trying to get the first points of the night offensively. Option roll, Klein lunges inside the one. He's a running quarterback, more than a passing quarterback. He is seventh overall. That's quarterbacks, tailbacks, you name it, anything you want. Seventh in the Big 12 in rushing. And what a great kid. Had an opportunity yesterday, Joel, with you and, and Jim Knox and all of us on the production team to sit and talk with Colin Klein, a terrific individual and a tough kid. 6'5", 230, you'd think he's a pocket passer. He's a running quarterback first, averaging over four yards a carry this season. And you don't have to talk to his, his high school coach, I guess. To, he was homeschooled. That's right. That's, That's right. He's from Loveland, Colorado. It'll be second and goal. And up the middle, he's in. Touchdown, K-State. Took a while, but he was there. So, Colin Klein. Puts K-State up again. And I say again because 37 seconds into the game, they led on an interception return for a score by Nigel Malone. At uh, 230 pounds, why not get by behind your big offensive line? Look at him, foot to foot, shoulder to shoulder. Klein's not even touched by a black jersey. Just fits behind all that white and gets it into the end zone. Now let's see if they can negotiate the extra point. Last one was hooked wide left. It was hooking, but it made it through. And it's a six-point lead for the Wildcats trying to go 6-0.
4.54 left in the half. And K-State regains the advantage. Okay, for Texas Tech, except the scoreboard. And that guy, Common Klein, is pumping him up. Shouldn't be surprised. That's the blueprint for yes. Bill Snyder. Uh, he doesn't mind if they're doubled up in yards right now. Nine plays, 46 yards on the last drive. Set up by Gidry's second block field goal of the night. It'll be taken by McGroy. Back at about the five. And a huge hole up the middle. Closes in a hurry near the 28. Academy Sports and Outdoors. Game break time as we go to Kevin Fraser and Marcus out. Yeah, we're shocked too, Kevin. We can tell. You guys are surprised. 4.50 left in the half. And a little quick out. Take it in. As it's a gain of about seven or eight by Swindle. Well, he's already thrown 27 passes. 66 balls thrown last week. But that's their trailing big against AM and then tried to make the comeback. It's not a large deficit. Let's see if the running game is going to be a factor. Yeah. It's going to be a factor for a first down. And what a landing that time. Looked like a gymnast, didn't he, Aaron Crawford? <laughs> Aaron Crawford, very good back. He's not Eric Stevens, but he's a very good back. Crawford and DeAndre Washington, who we've already seen in the end zone tonight, very capable backups for Eric Stevens. So first down. And again, a bullet. Good grab. And good yardage. It's taken in by Torres. Boy, the velocity. Yeah, I like Seth Dagey and his presence in the pocket. Watch how he steps up, steps through his drop, and then delivers the ball accurately down the field. Yeah. Scrambling over to the left side. Good run into the secondary. Look out. Crawford into the secondary. Touchdown, Texas Tech. yards on the carry for Aaron Crawford do you want to go for two the way their kicking game has worked extra point try coming up for Corona took a long time to regain the lead four plays 72 yards covered in exactly 60 seconds that is Texas Tech football quick strike offense 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 Boy, they have got some players. Remember, Eric Stevens goes down a week ago. He's their number one back. This is their backup, Aaron Crawford. And how about this run? Good balance and vision, finding the hole, and then the cutback late to get himself into the end zone. This is not easy to do against Kansas State because Kansas State normally very sound against the run. Very base defense that they throw out there. Not a lot of man coverage, which you see long runs against Joel. And you got to remember that Crawford, he's a senior from Memphis. His dad played college ball at Memphis State in the old days, before it was the University of Memphis. He figures going into the season, how many touches do I get my senior year because of Stevens? He only had eight carries coming into tonight's ball game on the year. Now he's going to be asked to do much more with Stevens out. Deliver some fireworks there on a 51-yard touchdown run. That'll help your average. He's got 76 yards already on the ground out of four and it'll be stained in the end zone so k-state has it at their own 20 down by one jim knox tell you what joel this is a back and forth game you don't want to miss the second half homecoming in lubbock so the 12th man could be the difference like jane kirkinell 1939 cheerleader go for it jane 90 years young right there joel clack couldn't do that in his heydays guys <laughs> Knox, don't leave. Please help her up, Jim. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think I just tore my hamstring. It's a one-point game. It hurt up here. <laughs> 355 left in the half. Now the scoreboard tells the whole story as you look at the differential. <laughs> the explosiveness of Texas Tech means nothing. They've been hurt on specials and right out of it. But that's rare for K-State, a delay of game. It's a five-yard penalty. So they've had and it's still first three time. offsides and a delay of game. They normally snap it inside of 10 seconds, but that wasn't 
anything other than Colin Klein didn't look up to the play clock. Sometimes that does happen to quarterbacks when they're this far into their own end at the 15 yard line. You just forget about looking that far into your end zone. Now out of the gun. It's Hubert and he won't make it back to the line. Good penetration up front. Well, first one there and cleaning up. It was Trey Porter. This but the guy that torpedoed it was Dartwan Bush. And Dartwan Bush is feeding off of the momentum created by that long run from their offense. This is what Kansas State is not built for. They're built to take the momentum away from teams with long drives and running the ball methodically down the field. Very tough for them when the defense gets the momentum and is playing fast. Coaches say when you're off schedule, it really hurts, and that's the case now for Kansas State. Shovel and a good open field play for Hubert. Making a miss across the 25 and a manageable third down coming up now. Great play call. Terrific play call by Dana Demo in his 14th season with Bill Snyder as the offensive coordinator. The shovel, we've seen it twice today. I love how Colin Klein sells it to the left. Really sells it looking all the way outside. Then shovels underneath the Hubert. And Hubert does a great job of getting up there, making this a manageable third down. They've hit half of the third down five so far. Out of the gun needs five. Pocket holds up. Man, it's deflected. Good play underneath. He was trying to get it to Chris Harper, but it was deflected before it ever came close. Terrence Bullet, number one, fell underneath that route. Terrific defense in anticipation of where they were trying to go. They were trying to throw that curl about 10 yards deep. Falls underneath it, bats it away. So it's three and out and an opportunity now for Texas Tech to extend the lead. Zuzalik. They have a chance to return one finally. Real good hang time for Dora. Man, ooh, hard hit. And leading with his helmet brings a flag. It was simultaneous on the catch by Zuzalik and the hit. No halo rule in college football anymore. You can be as close to him as possible. You can hit him right when he touches the ball. Speaking of the returner, Zuzala. A personal foul by number 22 of the kicking team. It's a 15 yard penalty, and it's a first down. It's Thomas Ferguson. And was it the use of the helmet? Yes. See how his head goes down, yeah. Joel, and targets him high. How about the helmet? So tough. This is one of the toughest things to do in all of football. Be one of the gunners on the punt team, the timing, but you see there, that, that's the look that the official had, and it's clear from that look that it's going to draw a flag. Out to the 45, after the mark off at 15. So a short field now, with 2.28 to play in the half. Good pocket protection again. Man, close to the first down on the grab. As once again, they hit Ward. That's been his favorite target here in the first half. First and 10 line is brought to you by Mazda. It won't be up long because the ball is moving quickly with Texas Tech. Man, not that quickly. Kansas State with a good penetration on Crawford. It was Gidry getting into the backfield. The guy that's blocked two field goals already. And now timeout has been taken with 2.02 to play. In that game, so Kansas State trying to keep pace with the Cowboys and the Sooners. Now third and six. They bring more as Daggy has single coverage and he's got a first down going to Alex Torres. But they gambled on the outside, brought the extra pass rush. Single coverage. Arthur Brown is coming on a bit of a delayed blitz. And Seth Daigie is so patient in the pocket, he knows he's going to get hit, but allows his receiver the opportunity to come open late over the middle. What great poise from Daigie in the pocket. It's complete to the 35. Daigie again. And dropped as it was available. DeAndre Washington. He's done a lot of good things tonight, and, and that was just resourcefulness by Daigie. 
he was ready to throw the ball away. Yeah, just manipulating the pocket a little bit to find those extra seconds back there to try to find an open receiver. Very smart from Seth Dagey. So 31, make it 32 after that last one. 32 passes thrown by Dagey in the first half alone. Good pocket protection. Man. Uh, good grab by Ward. He's short of the first down by about three. They wouldn't have to try another field goal, would they? Better block Gidry if that happens. Here's Ward working a curl route. Very easy against zone defense. You see him sit. He didn't float anywhere. That's exactly what you want your receiver to do from a quarterback standpoint versus zone. Give you the numbers. Sit down. Let me throw you the football. Frame you up. their second time out of the half. Hit you right on the chest. Out. And as we watched film yesterday of Kansas State defensively, they want to, you're not going to go over their head. No, exactly. They, it's in front of them. Going to try to keep everyone. Three. There's Gidry, who's been a big playmaker on special teams as well as getting to the backfield. Now, pocket collapsing. Daggy, little dump off. Will Crawford get there? He's got the first down inside the 25 to the 21. And again, Daggy just didn't panic in crucial situations Kansas State is automatically going to that one person pressure and playing man to man behind him inside of a minute left a lot of time for Texas Tech and grab is made first and goal diving to the goal line did he get there it looked like Ward was out of bounds and they're going to say he was at about the two but again a nice strong throw great throw good timing by the wide receiver coming back out of that break there he is trying to tightrope. I think they're saying that left foot was the one out of bounds. They'll go in a hurry. And over to the left side. Slamming it. It'll be Williams down to the one. He is there. Kenny Williams is a short yarded back. His first carry, his first activity of the night. He stays in the backfield. And Daggy will keep it. He's in. Texas Tech touchdown. Texas Tech came back with the same play. Running backs going that way. As soon as the defensive end crashes down, Daigie goes on the outside. Easy read for Daigie, easy touchdown. Terrific job by Texas Tech. Easy has not been an operative term for the place kicker tonight, but Corona <laughs> drills it for the extra point. So now an eight-point lead with 35 seconds left in the half, and again, Daggy engineering it very efficiently and, and we talked about the patience and he never panics when he is in the pocket well it early in this game he threw that pick six I was wondering how he was going to come back and he has just been sensational during the course of this game Kansas State giving them those middle seams down the field he's thrown with great timing on the outside on the comeback routes giving his wide receivers a chance deep high letting them going up and get it and then decision making in the run game that defensive end crashes. Daigie walks into the end zone. 28 points. Even though Kansas State has done everything that they wanted to do so far in this game, Daigie has been so good, almost 300 yards. After that pick six early, boy, this offense, it hasn't been stopped except for a couple of blocks field goals. Yeah, they've made some mistakes, as you mentioned, and their own undoing has been special teams, whether it's covering a kick or protecting on placements. All four touchdown drives by Tech. Typical. Under three minutes. And now the line drive. Right pass. The return man. Thompson. So 35 seconds left. Only one timeout on the board. And do they have a timeout remaining? Kansas State. Yes, one. But you got to believe they're headed to the locker room with an eight-point deficit. Yeah, they're not built to score in 35 seconds. I'll be shocked if they do anything except take a knee here. Well, they're going to line up in a regular formation. Probably give Hubert a chance in the run game. Sixth possession of the game for K-State. It's Hubert for five. And that should do it for the first half of play. So a wild one where special teams were critical for Kansas State because offensively they did not manufacture a lot. They had that short field after the block of the second field goal by Corona. Man, Colin Klein 
And Bill Snyder's squad made the most of it. A 46 yard field. And Colin Klein got into the end zone. Their only points offensively. So K State in great shape when you consider Texas Tech has really marched up and down the field. We check in with Jim Knox. Knoxy. Thank you, Joel. Coach, you got to be pleased. You know, you take away those two block field goals, a few mistakes in the first half, but yeah, your offense is clicking 296 total yards. Yeah, we can move the ball on just about anybody. We're just playing such a horrific special teams. I think we all noticed that. But, uh, you know, we. We just got to keep our focus. They're doing a good job of turning their body and getting in on our field goals. We, we can correct that. The big thing we got to do is just keep our poise. And it looks like we did the first half. We usually play better the second half. Hopefully we do. I right, appreciate Thank the time, you. Coach. Halftime in Lubbock and Texas Tech leading Kansas State 28 to 20. When we return, we'll take you to the Coors Light Studio with Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen right after this quick timeout. Stay with us.